Hello and welcome to ESPN Cricket Info video cast. Absolutely thrilled today to have Mahela Jayawardena here with me all the way from Sri Lanka. Typically, like all of us, trapped, but he's got a great, great company. Mahela, wonderful door behind you. Is that an actual door or is it just a decorative thing on the wall? It's a decorative thing, uh, Sanjay. Thank you for having me. Good to be talking. Yeah, it's it's one of these uh, Sri Lankan antique doors from mm. the north. um from jaffna uh, mm. so yeah it's quite beautiful so um yeah something unique the first question now uh, mahela is uh, uh you know i set eyes on you when you were there in hong kong right hong kong sixes you had gone there and i noticed you you had an i think played for sri lanka at that time but i noticed you uh and one of the things i noticed is boy this guy can bowl some good medium pace and then later on He batted as well. So, what happened <laughs> to your medium pace bowling? Um, okay, there's a good story behind that as well, um, Sanjay. I'll, I'll have to uh, probably elaborate a bit more. Sure. Uh, I was uh, 18, uh, sitting for my A-level exams. Um, I was part of the Sri Lankan A setup at that time. Uh, we had toured um, to Bangladesh and all that. So, the first day of my A-level exams, they called me. I still remember it was a Wednesday. and <clears throat> said uh, we you've been selected to go to hong kong for the weekend um i think it was a tuesday weekend tournament and um i didn't go to tell the officials that i'm actually sitting on the um exams um so i went back home told my parents that i've got this call the sri lankan a team touring um uh hong kong um what 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 should i do and they said well it's your call i was so proud of my parents up to now because wow <clears throat> that tournament um, that tournament actually gave me a, a a stepping stone because i performed really well in that tournament and they said okay you can do your exams next year when i was playing um, school cricket um i was a fast bowler um and then batted number 3 um so i put a lot of effort into my bowling as well but unfortunately sanjay like all youngsters you know at that time we were not put into a proper training uh, schedule of fitness and strength work um so later on when i grew and started playing first class cricket um i had to give up my fast bowling because i got some back problems and um the advice was that you know you need to um you know just concentrate my on my batting and not so much on my bowling so became a slow off cutter for a while i i bowled quite a bit in international cricket but fast bowling i had to give up anyway i wasn't that quick it was just a decent gentle medium pace just mm. um trying to keep up with the rest yeah in a way uh, you were an all rounder because all rounder we think about that as bowler but you were a batsman and a prolific in a slip fielder the contribution via catches has been immense and then of course leadership for a long time but i can tell you one thing i do maybe with your physique taken up fast bowling i doubt whether you would have played 652 internationals for sri lanka only sachin has played more than you 664 and not much that not too many people realize how much cricket you played my line i remember saying this in guwahati when i stumbled upon these number and he said you yeah, are too much no too much <laughs> <laughs> but is i think i think i i took the advice of the doctors and the physios at that time and um you know stop my bowling um i think those are decisions that you have to make um to make sure that you know you have a effective career um, i've seen a lot of good cricketers through the years have you know not been able to be fit and being on the park playing cricket so i was one of those fortunate ones who never had a serious injury or I missed a match or a series um the only time i missed uh, was when i broke my finger i had multiple fractures i missed a test match um, but other than that uh, yeah, i have series a, i think so, versus bangladesh with a split webbing also much much later in your career correct and um <clears throat> uh so i think you know you had to be lucky to go go through that you have your niggles i don't think any sportsman yeah. who's playing the modern game play without a niggle i think you know there's always going to be niggles um you have to just um, you know pay play with that kind of pain but 
um but i know there are a lot of cricketers who would have had amazing careers but were shortened purely because of uh, um, lasting injuries so i think you had to be um, blessed to to be able to have that but like you said you know it's a lot of cricket and and now it's privileged to have played among greats of the game in that era of you know what 18 years or so um amazing characters amazing players and and always had challenged and uh, always enjoyed that uh, camaraderie um playing against all alongside them sri lanka interestingly is not you know pure sort of one sport nation you know people play other sport as well uh did you sort of start off thinking cricket and how did that happen and how did batsmanship happen was there a batting culture like india in sri lanka when you were growing up well i think there is a batting culture i think when i started playing softball cricket when i was about 7 8 um, with my friends there always a batsman and i used to be a decent wicket keeper as well so i'll bowl i'll go keep wickets do everything um but in in sri lanka and in the subcontinent it's cricket first and then you pick up all the other sports and and do that as well so i did athletics i played a little bit of football um pretty decent Not with rugby. the rugby rugby as well um Build a basketball. So wherever we have these little breaks or whatever, then you go and just play. And I was in a school where we had all the sports, so you were able to fiddle around with that. Um, but only when I was about 15 that you know all the other sports were put aside and concentrated only on on cricket. Um, but before that, I was an athlete. I went up to junior nationals and and participated in that. Uh, but I think all that contributes because I think you know yeah. playing other sports. helps you a lot and you need to encourage younger generation to pick up other sports because you pick up different skills and like coordination your running your rhythm all that um yeah but i think uh, cricket in in this part of the world is massive so if you are half decent uh, you you would try to you know pursue that career but um uh yeah i mean i i was in different to any other kid growing up at that time so cricket was number one and then after that all the other sports and also did you feel that you were good enough to play for sri lanka so when did that realization come um sanjay i think when i was a youngster cricket in sri lanka was not that popular to be honest i think I mean we got test status in 82 um yes there was a culture about cricketers so the domestic cricket was very popular in the sense a lot of people would come and watch uh, schools cricket club cricket um so yeah you get that little popularity being part of that small community of your school your old boys and that and then if you play club cricket The, the turnaround came in Sri Lanka was in '96. I think that's when the World Cup yeah, was yeah. won, and one just uh, you know became engrossed in 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 cricket and and the players. And um, yes, you had your top players, you know, Aravind, Arjuna, Hashan, Roshan, Murali, and Vasi were still youngsters who just joined the team. Um, but some of the other cricketers were not so popular like who were yeah. part of that whole group but once you won when they won the 96 world cup i mean that is when you know everybody when i was 18 um just out of school that was my last year at school when when that happened in 96 so the commercial aspect of the game evolved lanka after that so that is when you know every name who would play in the national team became a household name and people got to know them better um coming back to that second question when did i knew i was good enough um i don't know i mean i played those age group cricket and then you get to the sri lankan a team and you get your first sri lankan test cap and then you think wow this is something special i've always said that that's the best moment in my my cricketing career is to receive that cap from at that time arjuna was the the captain and and i got it from him that was the best moment but still you are not sure whether you belong there whether mm. you are part of that and whether you're good enough i think that moment came when i scored my first 100 at in at goal against new zealand on the 7 and in your first 
seven or eight test matches in my head. Like he had scores of two forty-two and one sixty-seven. So that bad habit of grinding the bowlers was there right at the start of your career. That's what I said. Like you know, when you when you know that you've been able to do something like that at that level against a good quality opposition, then that gives you that confidence. Okay, yeah, I belong here. But still, you have to work harder to to be there. So Mahela, just moving on. Now you're playing for Sri Lanka. You have those scores: one sixty-seven, two forty-two. So that is what I, you know, the memories. I mean, I had a an exclusive contract with the TV channel that got me to come to Sri Lanka a lot. And I, the memories that I carry is basically you and Sangha batting together and Morley doing a lot of bowling. So this thing about heavy run scoring, despite the weather in Sri Lanka. How is that? You know, is that connected with your DNA, the temperament that Sri Lankans have? They seem like they're pretty calm, patient people. Is there a connection there? Yeah, I think you know, you you grow you grow up in that kind of environment, playing your school cricket and your domestic cricket. Um, the heat is something that you will have to cope up with. There's no doubt about that. I think even in India, if you play in the south part of India, it's pretty much the same. Um, so, and the other thing is like um, we don't get so much batting practices in the nets when we grow up. You get your 10-15 minutes. The only time I mean, that you can bat. actually <laughs> bat. so you don't want to get out. Hmm. You, you definitely don't want to get out. So you have to find a way to you know get through that initial period and and start batting, batting, batting. And the one thing I've I've learned. When I was playing international cricket, it was trial and error. Is that a lot of the things you can control uh, is with you. And and the best advice I got as a youngster was from Barry Richards. He came down to Sri Lanka. Uh, was my I was on my second year with the national team. He came down a couple of stints as a batting consultant. Um, so all the younger guys were just around him. Like I knew who Bad Richards was because I watched his videos and all that. So yeah, you, well, you know, amazing. cricketers from the 1940s. So Bad Richards, you know, yeah. Shift. So I was like, I was engrossed. I was always asking him questions. So one of the sessions he told me was that remember to control what you can control. But at that point, even though I realized what he was saying, I didn't know how um, deep that. Was and then how how can you put that into your game and even after cricket? So his theory was the weather, the conditions, um, the fans, the media, how the opposition guys are going to bowl at you, what they say, whatever. This is on cricketing terms. Mm. You cannot control any of that, which is not yeah. in your control. So why would you worry about that? Why would you even pay attention to that? So, in return, is that you control your preparation to handle that? What about the physical aspect, the endurance, and forget about the skills and the mental strength and stuff? Yeah, I mean it's very important. I can't, uh, you know, say enough about fitness and cricket. I mean, people think that okay. Cricketers um, don't have to do that because it's not endurance-wise. Yeah. Like it's not like a football yeah, game. Not like explosive. Sure, but it's not, high. Yeah. But then you take your fast bowlers. They probably have to work more than anyone else. And then your batsman. But like when you're playing a test match, that is where I've always said that test cricket is where you actually get tested. Uh, your mental aspect and your fatigue and mental fatigue as well. To, to do that, you have to have so much of good fitness uh, under your belt. Um, I mean, getting up from day one to day five is completely different in the morning. Your body is sore, you go on through the mill, but you still have to get out and, and do the job on, on a fifth-day test match. So, you have to put in. And I think in Sri Lanka, I'm, I'm sure most of the guys will agree, that we turned a corner in 94 95 with that Watmore coming into Sri Lankan cricket as a coach and him bringing Alex Conturi as our physio fitness trainer that yeah, australian yeah. culture kicked in at that time 
I know Arjuna and some of the boys were not the biggest fan of that um, because before that, you know, you run your five rounds and you warm up and then you do that. But Alex was different and Dav was different and we had our mm. 6 a.m. fitness sessions, proper training methods, you have to do your beep test, um, you know, all that. So we were the youngsters who got into that regime early and we continued that and if you see the modern day cricketers, the amount of work that they do, it's phenomenal because they tend to play more cricket now than what yeah. we used to do and it shows how much it has evolved and the discipline that needs for for the cricketers to have that fitness. You played in 97, finished in 2014, you played two decades of, you know, uh, a bowling attack. I want to talk about quality of bowling. Yeah, the bowling attack. Did you yes. play better quality in the first half or the second half of your only test cricket? See, if you take numbers wise, if you take the top 10 wicket takers um, in modern day cricket, all across the board, say test match cricket, all those guys are in that bracket who I played in that era. So you get your I missed out on Walsh and Kapil, I uh, just started after that. But if you take um, Murali, Shane Warne, McGrath, um, Anil, uh, Baji, Saklain, Wasim Waka, uh, Brett Lee, Anderson Broad. Uh, Anderson Broad, who started and is just, you know, at the back end of their careers. So all that is, you can package them in one era and, and they've been brilliant and the numbers speaks for itself all different formats and, and they've been brilliant so I think the skill levels have improved tremendously uh, we yet to see the modern day bowlers whether they will hit those targets um, once they finish their careers you have to still see a stark um, and or a uh, Rabada or a Bumrah and all these guys how long, uh, yeah. Opens and all that in, in formats, whether they'll be able to hit those. But it doesn't mean that even if they don't hit those numbers of those grades, that these guys are bad bowlers. But they yeah, are probably yeah. up against a better uh, batting units in, in mm -hmm. modern day because the guys are being toughened up so much, playing so much of cricket and so much of aggressive cricket as well. Moving on, Mahela, because this is one of the highlights of my conversation. There are just two questions left. I want to ask you because I want to sort of replicate, don't give us all the stuff, but you know, that conversation that we had in Guwahati. You know, Muthaya Murli Dharan, I feel, is one of those guys, when you look at a champion, he is a true champion, a great cricketer, but doesn't have all the qualities that you associate with greatness. Slightly defensive, you know, in the way he went about his business, he's not a stereotypical great performer with those typical qualities and, and then I want to talk about Sangakara. So go ahead, tell us about Murli. He, he's still a champion uh, but the yeah. way he went about doing that was different to maybe your normal. So if you compare... Like a Warni. He, you compare Warni and Murli. It's two different uh, uh, personalities, character-wise is different. Skill-wise is different. Um, Warren is a steady leg spinner, knew his art, had the control, but he probably played much more with the tactical owners of, okay, you come and attack me, I'll get you out kind of thing, because he knew that he didn't probably didn't have the variety that Murray had. Um, uh, I mean, uh, Murali was completely different because he was much more in control of, he knew exactly what he was doing. He was up to grinding a batsman down. If he had to wait for 10 overs to get a batsman out, he'll wait that out because he will bowl that 60 overs or 50 overs without a problem. I still remember in 2000, early 2000, the South Africans came to Sri Lanka and, and they beat us. And the only thing they did was, I mean, those days there was no DRS, nothing. They just keep padding him out to your stump and without a stroke. But the umpires couldn't give anyone out because nobody was turning the ball so much. Um, but he wouldn't go around the wicket and bowl to a right hand. So that smothers the spin, but you get more LBWs because you are hitting a right hander in front of the wicket. Uh, 
But Murli did not like that angle because he said, no, then I can't get much spin. It wasn't comfortable. So to convince him to go round the wicket, to cast much longer, but he would go round the wicket to a left hand, but he wouldn't go round the wicket to a right hand for a long period of time. He only got to that only in, I think, 2003, 4, somewhere around there, 2002, 3, 4. Once he tasted the success by going round the wicket and getting... You're talking about seven, eight years of his test career wasn't keen to go round the wicket. He never bowled round the wicket to a right hand. If you take any footage, he had never gone round the wicket. Um, so, when he started hitting the pad all the time and he had the wrong one to go, so the batsman wasn't sure which way he was going. So, he gave more LBW decent because umpires were comfortable giving LBWs yeah. to a right hand when he comes to the wicket. And we just couldn't stop him going around the wicket there. You know, <laughs> so he would start hmm. around the wicket to a right hand. Um, but then we have to like say once a batsman gets used to that angle, come on early, let's go over the wicket for a few overs and then well, get Was he a hard man to convince Mahela as captain? Very hard. Very hard. Very hard. Very <laughs> it's not easy. And what did he do? It's what would you do as captain? If he wasn't doing what you wanted, uh, what would you have to eventually sort of relay? Yeah, so the only thing with Murali is that if you're a captain, then you say you're not bowling for a few overs and then he'll get upset. And then he'll come back and say, okay, fine, we'll bowl like that, give me the ball. Because he wants to bowl all that. So, if you want to convince him, he had to stop him bowling for a few hours. And then you see him walking, hovering around you, wanting the ball back. But then you say, okay, if you do this only that, you can get the ball back. So, then he'll come back. To so, but is it about just bowling in matches to get wickets? Was that the desire or he also bowled a lot in the nets and wherever possible? Was he a guy who just loved the ball? He just loves to bowl, but he wants to get wickets. I mean, there's no okay. no secrets about his um, desire to win. Mm. But the thing with Morelli is that he would put a lot of pressure on himself, which is, can't blame him as well. Like, for almost 10 years of his better part of his career, Sri Lanka completely dependent on Morelli and Vasi. And when you're playing at home, Vasi could do a certain job in the sense he controlled from one end, he pick up wickets with the new ball, but after that he just put pressure and pressure. And Murli was the guy who would be your go-to guy to win a test match. So just a couple of questions now. Now Kumar Sangakara. You know, you talk about numbers, greatest scrutiny, and now when people look at his numbers, they're thinking oh, one of the all-time great batsmen. So just you having been a close compatriot, batted together, great friends as well. Where do you put Kumar Sangakkara in the annals of history? And when you look at the game for its number of years, and great guy to talk to because you're almost like a historian, my After this chat, I'm going to call you the historian who got inspiration <laughs> from the Bodyline series. Okay, Sangakkara, no, I, the batsman. No, I think, I mean, like you said, the numbers, sheer numbers shows that what a great cricketer he is. But what you have to understand is his first three or four years of his career as well. I mean, his, he didn't play that much. He played probably 15 years, a few years less than I have. Um, and his first three years and four years, this is a typical story where he wanted to understand how he was, how he would belong to international cricket. In the sense, his technique was completely different when he came into the national team. He came as a keeper batsman and worked his way up, four runs, but he had a lot of things with his technique and he said, I'm, I'm going to change my technique, I'm going to change how I play. And so he changed his stance, he changed his, um, the way his bat path was coming. It took him about six, seven months to get all that sorted. And then once he got to that mode where he was in control and he understood his game, the last six, seven years, the numbers that he put up on the board is phenomenal. I don't think any yeah, modern yeah. day great has done that. The Kumar Sangakkar, the first three, four years of his career and the last say eight years of his career, nine years of his career, is absolutely two different personalities. And if he had continued that back end for another four years, I don't think there'll be anyone who would have questioned with his numbers and, and the way he has gone about 
Um, and one thing I would say about Sangha is that it's sheer hard work. There is nothing else but sheer hard work. He's he's the first to get into the nets. He'll be the last to get out of nets. Uh, but that's Kumar Sangakara for you. I mean, he he'll, he'll so passionately once he puts his head like his focus into something, it just is a completely different beast altogether. And that's what he did in the last say ten years of his career. Final question, which I think a lot of people would want to ask, is uh, Sri Lanka's relationship with ICC event. This incredible, you know, results that you have in ICC events, and I. I am also going to ask you this that considering it is a small nation on the big stage 96 as well I mean you've chased down that target you know that shows mental toughness are we not just to not out 100 to win the game so for a small nation how does it perform so well on the big stage what about nerve what about not believing that you're capable of winning world title doesn't that that ever come across because you've been in semi finals you've been finals you won the world t20 you won the world cup so tell us this aspect which i've always found pretty unique uh, very simple people cricketers who are we are a team that would never be made of six or seven you know world class players like australia would have but still such an excellent record in icc when the big stage Well I think um we were blessed to have some extraordinary cricketers in this period as well of say 20 years since 96 up until 2015 um but at the same time uh, the only fact that I can put my finger and say why we did so well was we just played cricket um we did not think too much we just went out there and backed our ability and just played cricket everyone enjoyed everyone knew the role that they had to play in the team but that role was what they were good at if you take your bowlers if you take your batsmen we had specific guys who will do like you get your dilshan who started initially in 2007 world cup and Russell Lanner was the two guys who'll always finish shining and they knew that job was there kind of thing you mm-hmm. have your son up to new the team wants me to go out and give them a good start and if i keep going i'll win a match by myself but no one's going to blame him if he gets out in the first ball we were just playing cricket so we were not mm-hmm. tempted to do anything else other than just doing our responsibilities out there and and we had good group of players i mean correct me if i'm wrong i mean if you don't have guys who can have that skill set and and get the job done it's very difficult but even the guys who wasn't a murali or wasn't a vasi or a malinga they'll come and get the job done whatever is there required of it's a bill hara from the guru singh for example 96 <laughs> yes got the job done it to look at atna or ramesh kalu whose job was just to give a start if you get going brilliant start and if we have a collapse then you know you got your hashan and your roshan mahanam who goes and holds the fort for you and gets it done um your promote vikram singh as your kumar dharma sen as um so it's yeah. it's it's fascinating like how we managed to plug those holes with individuals and said you know you get this job done so i think that's what sri lanka cricket was so i've always said said it in public as well we have to play the sri lankan brand of cricket we cannot go away from that that's in our dna and that is our identity we have to always go and play that brand of cricket whether it's test matches whether it's one days whether it's t20 cricket we go out and play that brand of cricket i think we will not go wrong if you do that Uh, Mahela, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We could have caught up another thirty, forty minutes. There were two or three follow-up questions that I swallowed. I said, "No, this is going on too long." And one of the biggest, I think, problems for you would be in this lockdown that that you're not able to go to one of those restaurants in Colombo. It's a good one called the Ministry of Crabs. You know, if you have heard of it, <laughs> thank you very much, Mahela. Any final words? 
No, thank you, uh, Sanjay. It's been a pleasure and, and uh, good to see you um, after a long time. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, stay safe and, and uh, you know, take care of yourself. And thank you very much for having me. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Regards. Thank you very much. Thank you.